Hi, I'm Annie. I'm a senior in the Eberly College of Science. I'm majoring in general science, and I'm also the vice president of Science Lion Pride, the student ambassadors to the Eberly College. Hi, I'm Steve Andrews. I'm a junior biology major with a minor in chemistry. I'm the recruitment director for Science Lion Pride, and I'm really excited to get this tour going. All right, so here's the right in our building. It's home to the advising office for the Eberly College of Science. That includes biology, biochemistry, um, and a bunch of other bunch of other science majors that we have here in the college. Um, I know for me personally, having the advising office here is a great resource when you're trying to find you know what classes to take, what kind of you know different majors to explore, different career options to explore. So it's a really really great building full of different resources. Do you have anything else to say about Rittenauer, Annie? Um, yeah, so in the basement, there are these really great um, study rooms, and there's just a lot of study space that you can use. There are these um, virtual whiteboards. Yeah, yeah. There there's, like whiteboards. The, there's walls that are covered with whiteboards, so yeah. there's definitely places to scribble and jot down all the notes you have, and there's also places where you can connect your laptop to a bigger display if you are sharing notes with your group members. So it's a really great collaborative space. And I know as I know like I've done many group projects and studied for finals in in the basement of written hour. Yeah, there are also different resources for students such as the Millennium Scholars Office and the Veteran Affairs Office as well as the Future Students Office and the Office of Science Engagement, which um, yeah, I've used the Office of Science Engagement a lot and it's yeah, it's a really yeah. great place to go if you just need really anything, any help. Yeah, it's a great resource if you're looking to study abroad, maybe do a new internship or look for another re undergraduate research opportunity that we have in the college. So this is the Grange building, which houses um, our DUS. So if you come to Penn State as an undecided major or are looking to um, explore other majors, you can come here to get advised. Um, as we continue walking down this road um, into the center of campus, um, you can reorient yourselves. Rittenauer is right there, and we just passed Grange Building. And behind me is Buki Building, which is home to several general classrooms and computer labs. It's also home to resources for students, such as the Education Abroad Office and the uh, Student Disability Resources Office. Okay, so this is the Hub Robeson Center. It's one of the most highly trafficked areas on campus, approximately 40 thousand students come through here every day during the school year and there's a couple reasons for this one is the hub is a very popular lunch spot uh, we have chick-fil-a starbucks um, sabaro panda express are all within this building so during between class changes a lot of students will come in here to grab a quick bite to eat before going to the next class in addition to this there are a lot of club op offices on the on the top floors of the hub this includes thon homecoming spa and a lot of other clubs that um, a lot of our students are involved in. In addition, in addition to that, the Paul Robeson Cultural Center and the new LGBTQ Plus Resource Center are in the hub. So there are a lot of resources, a lot of things to do in the hub. Um, it's definitely a place to um, come through in between classes or if you want to meet up with your friends. So right across from the hub is Osmond Lab, which is the home of the physics department at Penn State. And if you uh, are taking a math, physics, or chemistry course, chances are you're gonna have to go to Osmond. It is also home to a lot of teaching labs and research labs for the physics department. And there's also a physics resource room in Osmond where you can find help from TAs and LAs of various courses so that they can help you with your physics classwork. So right next to Osmond Lab, and actually connected by a bridge on the second floor, is Davy Laboratory, which is home of astronomy and astrophysics. There's also a telescope observatory on the roof that is open for public viewing, um, and a lot of classes for astronomy and astrophysics majors will also involve using those facilities. Um, there's also the math and physical sciences library. Uh, so here, there are a lot of textbooks and resources for science students. So here we have McAllister, which is sandwiched neatly between Old Main and the Hub, and also across from Davy Laboratory. Um, the McAllister building is actually home to our math department, so a lot of math professors have their offices here. They also have a physical math laboratory, which is called the Wave Lab, and it's in the basement. So we're at the edge of the science campus now, really close to Old Main, and this is the Chanley Laboratory, which is home to a lot of research labs and also the genomics core facility. And this facility does in-house sequencing for all the Penn State labs. So looping back, um, we're next to the Davy Laboratory again, and this is Whitmore Lab, which 
If you end up taking a chemistry lab at Penn State, you will be spending a lot of time in Whitmore Laboratory. But luckily for you, it was renovated in 2016. So the facilities are really nice um, and everything is really updated. So you'll be spending lots of time in a really nice building. Uh, the first floor will house a lot of the general chemistry labs. And then the second floor, you'll have organic chemistry labs. And then on the third floor, there'll be forensics and gravitational physics, among other labs. Um, there's also a chemistry resource room in this building, so you can get a lot of help for your various chemistry classes from TAs and free tutoring. So there's, uh, it's a good place to go if you need help with your classes. Okay, so this is the Mueller Laboratory. It's home to the Department of Biology. Um, it's a really cool building. It's a very tall building that has six floors, and actually on the first floor is uh, what I'm going to talk about today. The first floor is home to um, four or five different undergraduate teaching labs. So for the Bio 100 and 200 level courses, you're um, most definitely going to have a lab on the first floor. In addition, um, on the first floor, there is a, a room we call the Biome. In the Biome, uh, we have uh, Bio LAs that are available for office hours and are a really great resource if you need help on your homework, you need help uh, studying for, uh, an, for an exam or have a project that's due. Um, so they're a really great resource. I'm actually a Bio 110 LA, and my office is actually in the, on the first floor of that building. Um, so yeah, it's a really great resource for students that are uh, studying biology, pre-medicine, science, or any, bio biolog any biological science for that matter. So here we are in front of Freer, which is home to microbiology as well as biochemistry and molecular biology, or BMB as we like to say. Um, this first floor will house a lot of the undergraduate teaching labs for BMB um, and also microbiology. And some bio professors will also have their offices in this building. So across from Freer is Althaus Lab, which I have never been in. And if you are like me and study just basic science classes, you probably also won't go in. But this building will have a lot of BMB faculty offices. There's also Althaus 101, which is a new experimental classroom. There's non-traditional seating, there are whiteboard walls, there's a large touch, touch screen display board, and it's really great for your smaller classes with emphasis on group work. So we've actually circled back on campus. So right over there is Rittenauer, where we started. Um, to my right, there's actually these forensic science cottages which are these cottages that are now used for forensic science students to have their um, fake crime scenes. So if you walk by and there's police tape and people in suits and stuff, it's not a real crime scene. They're doing this as an actual test or exam for their classes. And actually behind me is the chemistry building. Um, this isn't a, a building where you'd have classes typically, but it is home to a lot of chemistry faculty and their labs. So they will have their offices and labs in there. Um, and it's also connected to the Huck Life Science Building um, over there via a bridge. Okay, so this is the Huck Life Science Building and it's connected to the Chemistry Building by the Villabin Bridge. This is actually one of my favorite spots on campus. It's a really big hub for students going um, to and from from classes and especially for science students. This is where a lot of our uh, professors uh, actually have their offices. And up on the bridge, you can actually see there's, there's really large windows and a lot of undergraduates and graduate students like to study here um, in the evenings when uh, they have a final coming up. Um, and we like to say that because there's a bridge between uh, chemistry and Huck Life Science, we call it like the metaphorical and physical bridge between chemistry and life sciences. Because here at the college, we, we really emphasize uh, interdisciplinary scientific thinking and we'll have all kinds of different professors working in different departments to uh, kind of solve the problems of, of, our, of our time. So this is a really great spot. Um, it, a lot of the scenery is really great and I really personally, uh, this is one of my favorite spots on campus. Okay, so here is the Joe Bell Thomas building. It's one of the biggest classroom buildings on campus. It's also the official home to the Eberly College of Science. And this building is also home to a wide variety of classroom sizes. And we actually have one of the biggest classrooms in this building, Thomas 100, which can hold 750 students.